This is Tom Dillon, the Lifetime Liberal, and today is Friday, May 12, 2017. Uh, the tri title of this rant will be, The Great Betrayal is in Full Swing. Uh, so this Russian thing has legs. It's going to keep having legs. It's going to define Mr. Minority's administration for the first term. Hopefully there won't be a second term. Maybe it won't last the first term, but it is going to be the defining thing of this administration, and he is betraying the American people to trying to get out of it. So Comey got fired the other day. Uh, everyone in the White House, in terms of Mr. Minority's minions, went out there and basically indicated uh, that he was fired because the deputy attorney general wrote a memo saying he should be fired. The attorney general signed off on that memo. Uh, Mr. Minority got that memo uh, and then wrote in a letter to Comey as he's firing him as uh, saying that he three times, meaning Comey three times, absolved him of being uh, of being in part of any type of investigation. Uh, and that was clearly not true whatsoever in any way, uh, because two days later, basically, Mr. Minority went out there and said it was his call. And the reason why he did it, not only was Comey uh, a, a grandstander, etc., incompetent, uh, but that uh, it had all to do with the Russian thing. He wanted to get over the Russian thing. And this is what is showing just the incredible ineptness of Mr. Minority and his entire administration, especially the minions that are at the White House, which I've said before, are basically third-rate, fourth-rate players. All right, and of course, when Mr. Minority did it, he talked it, meaning meaning he talked about Russia wanting to get rid of it, saying it was fake news, it was the Democrats' fault because they were upset about the election. They wanted to pin this stuff stuff out of them. And of course, this is, especially when he talks about getting rid of Comey because of the Russia thing, a first sign of uh, obstruction of justice in terms of trying to get rid of something like that. Now, he mentioned in that little thing, meaning Mr. Minority did, that Comey had asked for a dinner, Comey had asked for a job, and it seems really stupid because <laughs> no one asked the president for, 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 for a dinner and no one basically goes up there and begs for a job when you already have a 10-year job. And of course, they have already talked to people who knew Comey, uh, who know Comey, who, re who recalled that when this dinner actually happened, that Comey had told them that he was uncomfortable about it, that Mr. Minority had asked for loyalty on separate occasions and he did not admit his loyalty. And again, this is what is an autocrat does. This is what uh, someone who wants to, you know, a, a, a third world country dictator does to make sure that they have the right people in place, that they won't screw them over. And Comey didn't do it. So <clears throat> what happened today was Mr. Minority came out and basically said, Comey had better watch what he has to say uh, because he might have had a recording of their dinner. <laughs> So, um, but again, that again is showing uh, the obstinacy, uh, the bulliness, the trying to be a bully, the someone trying to get his way, uh, the autocratness of Mr. Minority. In fact, I think from now on, I'm just going to have to call him the betrayer of trust because that's basically what he is, is the betrayer of trust. Now, in, in the midst of all of this, right now, all of the Republican leadership is silent on this, especially Ms. McConnell, especially Paul Ryan. They're not really saying much about the whole thing. None of the leadership in, in, in the House or the Senate of the Republicans are saying anything about it. And the reason why they're not is because they need to stick with Mr. Minority, even though his polling, his, his, his favorability is down in the tubes right now, is because they want what the re they think is the best thing for the Republicans ever, which is to basically hurt 24 million people and take them off the insurance rolls and to deduct approximately $880 billion from Medicaid over the next 10 years. About 90% of that is supposedly is going to be going to tax cuts to the rich. That's why they're silent. 
That's why no one has taken a look at this. Uh, if you think a special prosecutor is going to come in, don't see it happening right away until more Republicans get on board. And remember, Mr. Minority is 70 years old. He's going to continue being a bully. He's going to continue being obstinate. He's going to be continuing to have an incredible amount of ineptness in terms of any type of managerial managerial, managerial, <laughs> managerial capability in terms of running the White House or running this government at all. And remember, there's no jobs bill out there. There's no infrastructure bill. The ACA is not going to get, nothing's going to get done for that over the summer. They're going to go away, away for a week or 10 days for Memorial Day. They're going to go away a week or 10 days for uh, the 4th of July. They're going to be out for the whole month of August and the first half of September. And by then, everyone is going to be in especially in the House and the Senate, they're going to be in campaign mode, especially in the House. And a lot of these House members went back last weekend when they had a 10-day week well, vacation, and they heard a lot about the ACA. So there's none of this stuff is going to happen. So this recess, uh, nothing's going to happen. And then in the next fall, um, it's going to be too late for the jobs bill, for the infrastructure bill, to really stick it to the American people in terms of taking 24 million people off the pay, uh, uh, off the insurance rolls, all right? And it will only get worse as Mr. Minority digs in deeper and deeper. And remember, his minions in the White House are going to follow him and stay loyal to him the whole time. It will get worse.